Good morning. I was just freshening up, doing a little morning walk, just strolling through. These are rented gardens. This is a rented place. But when I think of what people have to do to maintain during a lockdown, during restricted movements, just during when you might choose upon yourself based on your information and feelings to limit your movement and circulation due to corona. And of course, there are many situations, many places where people have to. And I mean, there's a privilege to those who have space. I mean, privilege doesn't just extend to, oh, like you have more, it's not just economics, you know what I'm saying? It's not just the, the raw numbers of the economics, the percentages, the incomes, the, you know what I'm saying? The statistics. Think about the fact that you can afford space. And once you get past the affording, the purchasing power part, what is space? I mean, first of all, space is oxygen. You know what I mean? I mean, trees give off oxygen, like where? Into the air. You know, so just it's, if you have trees around you, flowers, plants, the ability of air to circulate, you know what I mean? Just clean terrain for the wind to flow over before it reach, reaches you, your lungs. The uh, psychological comfort of space where you don't suffer under the paranoia. You can escape from people, noise. You can actually set an environment the way that you want it. And I mean, I think there's a paranoia that comes from socializing all the time. Social media, constant activity and attention and maintenance and presentation of self monitoring of image, self-image, images that you also do offline, that we've also always done offline, which is just be in front of people. And when you have space, it's like you can get away from sounds that you don't want to hear, just the sounds that you even are part of your just soundscape are different. I mean, I'm hearing like birds, I'm hearing the far off whir of cars. It's like insect mating season. They got like flying ants up there right now. Sun still hasn't come over the mountain. Actually, I think it's behind some clouds, you know? And uh, space is a privilege. During the lockdown, it keeps you safe. You know what I'm saying? I mean, People who are living in like those locker type cells that they rent out and just kind of have a lock to. And I don't know, some overpacked city like Singapore or maybe like Hong Kong. I mean, how are they keeping two meters away from anybody at any given time? You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, even now there's a rule like people have to wear masks if they're not. If they don't live in the same household, they need to wear masks even when they're in the car with each other, even though they, you know, whatever. So anyway, if you rent a taxi here, if you take a subway, if you, I don't know, have to hitch a ride just because of your economic, financial circumstances, you can't distance during that ride. You got to constantly be around people. You can't choose who to be around with because you have to get to where you need to go. You know what I'm saying? So space is a privilege. And just to broaden this discussion to the planetary level, we humans have Earth. And now we're actually running it. Like we've been on it a long time. But now we actually dominate it. Humans have not always been the dominant species on this earth. When you look at all the places, let's just take one species, lions. 
I think lions are pretty much like the masters of their domain and humans can have their domains as well. But it's not like the lion need, might be going where they are and be afraid. It's more like they're going to be afraid of that lion. And there were lions all the way across North Africa into Europe, into, I mean, Arabia. Imagine there were like zebras here. When you got enough animals for lions to eat, there has to be a lot of, you know, land that animals use to crisscross, you know, to migrate. And there's got to be watering holes, you know what I mean? Those types of species really, like, do you ever see herds of buffalo and humans around each other? Like, do you ever see that? You know what I'm saying? So those species basically dominated the terrain that they used. And humans, you know, we basically coexisted, had dependent relationships. I mean, we depend on the same water. You know, it's not like we pump and irrigate everywhere, you know, everyone, that sort of thing. So there was a coexistence, but now there's human dominance. Like, it's not the herds of buffalo crisscrossing over centuries and millennia that create the trails and the roads. We create the trails and roads. You know what I'm saying? That's human activity. I mean, all archaeology, as far as it goes back, it seems like, do we even know the recent archaeology of our areas as far as like the species besides humans are concerned? You know? Do we ever think about like what animals lived here? I mean, you know, you can't even imagine what here used to be just because of like, it could be a suburb. But like I've been to places that were newly opened suburbs, they had like jackrabbits and coyotes and like six foot long snakes. I mean, that's, that's just what I remember off the top of my head. So I'm kind of like, you know, even plants used to dominate environments. Plants affect where the animals can do, where the animals can go and what they can do, right? Because a plant is what the animals live off. So, I'm just sharing air with this tree. We uh, are doing something with our space that makes it unlivable for ourselves. It's like, this is our space, our treasure. Like, space is the heritage, just like room on this earth. It's just like, here you are, you know? Here's world for you to live in. And like, I'm in a lockdown where we got I think eight, seven hours a night lockdown. No, sorry, 11, 11, sunset to sunrise. And when I look out at, when I listen out at night, I don't hear anything. There's not a single car on the road. I mean, you can hear people's ACs, but that's about it. I mean, there's chickens crowing 24 seven, like that's a soundscape here. Uh, you know, roosters crowing, it's kind of like a 24-7 thing. It don't really bother you. Now, when I looked outside, thinking, you know, I'm surrounded by these mountains and gardens and there's, you know, animals around and insects around. When I opened it, when I opened my door to look outside, I just saw, like, I couldn't see anything. Nothing besides the moon, hardly a star, because every single light was on. Every single building, like the mosques, people, outdoor lighting, they got 20 lights around their houses, they had them all on, like everybody had theirs on. And I'm like, what are we doing to each other's space? Like, we're blinding ourselves, or we're blinding each other in our own spaces, because like, you kind of taking that away from me that I can't see, I can't actually rest my eyes to the setting they need to be in at night. Like, you know, the way your eyes want to pose and hold and, you know, adjust. There's a nighttime setting when your body feels like being in a certain way. And when you got to put your eyes in a daytime position, it's like overstress. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like, if you have so much space around you that you can even, you know, affect the light scape, the light levels, 
of your environment, not your home, but your actual environment. That's privilege. You know what I mean? So it's just an examination of privilege to, first of all, remind myself to be thankful for what I have, to strive for what I need, and just to, you know what I'm saying, uh, empathize with everyone because it seems like this is a worldwide thing altering how we live it's not changing everyone's lives in the same way but you know you know we in this you know what i'm saying so i hope that you are blessed in your space and thank you for letting me share mine with you all right if you subscribe that'd be pretty cool because i know how many people i'm reaching out to and you know, hit me up with the comment as well. You know what I mean? Just uh, see what, whatever there else, whatever else there is to say. Peace.